Hello, hello, it's Elena. You also might know me by the nickname Hailless Emotion on Instagram. And this year I participated in the 36 Days of Type Challenge. And uh, you probably, if you've seen my Instagram, you remember those letters. And today I'm going to show you how to animate and how to create it from scratch. Uh, the animation of my number six um, is going to be the loop animation. So we can actually play it as many times as we want. And let's see what's going on here. We have a simple background layer some kind of star it's like this little thing that is rotating uh, it's just doing a one whole circle and the next layer called circle is just covering our circle animation and the pass so uh, we put our star on top of it and the next layer circle animation uh, this this checkerboard style thing and the last one is the path it's actually what kind of formed the base of the uh, six it has this sort of offset style and I'm going to explain how do we create this and how do we do it smart with expressions so <laughs> stay tuned and let's start I guess and uh, we're going to create a new composition I call it the main composition thousand by thousand pixels and three seconds long I'm just going to organize things here Great, and let's start uh, with creating our background layer. You don't really need this, but uh, I don't know, somehow I prefer this for <laughs> organization. And uh, I think we can start with the circles animation composition because this is the easiest step. The pass might take a little bit longer. So I'm going to create another composition and call it circles animation. It's going to be basically the same settings. And here we're also going to create a solid that's going to be our background and we're going to duplicate it and call it the checkerboard because we are going to apply the checkerboard effect on top of it. And uh, let me show you what's going on here. So we just <clears throat> analyze uh, our keyframes. Uh, I did animate width and height, so we need to change this uh, settings from the width slider to the width and height sliders because they're going to have different values and I'm not going to just create all those values now from scratch. I'm just going to copy them into the new composition, but let's see how it all works. So we animate width. Uh, you don't need to put keyframes in the exact same positions, exact same values as I did. Basically, whatever you do works here. You just change um width and height to make it like going from let's say 238 to 214 and then 600 so um, you know something random uh going to work i'm just going to turn off those effects here so we see better what's going on i also used uh, the whole keyframes here and the linear keyframes here to add a little extra layer of randomness I animated the anchor point, uh, the anchor point here uh, again to add some random look and the rotation, uh, it looks kind of weird. I have the keyframes here every 10 uh, frames. Uh, it's going from 0 to 80. You could have just done going the linear animation from 0 to 80, but since I'm going to apply the posterize time effect, uh, this kind of uh, keyframe seem to give me a better look uh, and it's up to you really how, how do you want to do this so uh, what I'm going to do now I'm just going to copy these values into our new layer and the rotation values as well and now we just need to apply the polar coordinates um, effect to make this kind of square composition into a little circly thing. Now it already looks almost exactly like it was um, in the letter that I designed. And we just need to apply the posterize time effect on this. I kind of learned this from Ben Marriott. <laughs> I just love this kind of 
um, look that it creates. Uh, we only, like with the posterous time, uh, we put the frame rate on 12. That means that instead of just seeing this linear, perfectly um, perfect animation that just goes straight, like we, we see the animation in every frame, we put posterous time and we see the animation every change every two frames. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm explaining, but well, just do it. It's, it's a nice thing to do. And we're going to add the polar coordinates on our background layer as well. Could have just copied the effect from the previous layer, but <laughs> anyway. And what's next? Um, basically, this is all done. We're just going to the main composition and we're going to bring our circles animation here. Um, make it a little smaller and now we're going to create a shape layer with the ellipse uh, i'm using for this the primitive script um, you can just create a shape layer with circle like no difference but for me it's easier to create this like this uh, sorry this way because you can already set the diameter for your circle and now we need to um, to adjust our circle to make it proper size and we're going to convert uh, the ellipse path to the bezier path so we can actually edit all those um, points i'm going to turn off the circles animation just for a moment uh, so we can see what's going on here you can take any of those points now and do whatever you want with them and we need to open this path um, and for that i'm going to create two extra um, points over here we're going to select them, go to mask and shape pass and open the pass. So as you can see now, we have this sort of hole here and that will allow us to uh, just sort of create a six uh, out of it. I'm not going to do this now, just, you know, like you understand how it works. So I'm just simply going to copy the pass straight from here. Uh, but the idea is the same, uh, you just need to open the circle pass and uh, edit it a little bit. And let's bring our circle animation in place. That's good. Uh, so what do we want to do now? Uh, well, for starters, we're going to name our layer and put it underneath the circle animation. And we want to create the offset uh, style look. So it's going to be another shape on top of this, another one on top of this. And for that, we need to mm, add the offset pass uh, modif modifier, modificator. <laughs> well, you understand what I mean. Um, Okay, and uh, right now we don't need this uh, offset on the first group, uh, so we, I'm going to put it to the zero and I'm going to rename this group and duplicate it. Our duplicate is going to be copy one. I'm just going to put it, sorry, down below. And uh, well, for starters, we are going to connect um, to create a little expression. So this shape would always be the same as this one. As many shapes we're going to create, they're all going to um, repeat. If we change this shape, they will all follow. And right now is the most interesting part. We're going to write the expression for the offset path. Um, so for that, we need to create a slider. Uh, this is going to be our offset amount. Uh, so I will set it for 20 to start with. I already uh, have my expression somewhere around here, but it just disappeared. So I'm just going to copy it from here and I'm going to explain how it all works. Uh, we are applying the expression on uh, offset pass amount of our copy group. So what is happening here? Uh, what we want to do, uh, I'm just going to turn it off for a second. What we want to do, we want to create many copies and uh, all of them have offset pass. And of course we could do this all manually. We could just say here it's going to be 10 and here it's going to be 20 and so on and so on. But then we would need to put so many keyframes and um, it's just kind of more complicated and we want to be smart. We want to write the expression that makes all this job for us. Um, 
so the layers in After Effects, they have indexes, as we can see here, it's one, two, three. Uh, the same applies to the shape control layers, but we don't really see the indexes. It's not just so simple because the structure is less linear and we need to understand in the which level of your now and what is the index of this group. So we're creating the group index variable here and uh, with this uh, group index, we're going to figure out what is the address of this group we are in right now. So to figure this out, we need to look where we are now, which level, property group one, and uh, now we need to still go one level up to, to reach this group copy one. Uh, so this is going to be property group two, and then we're using the method property index to actually um, get this number. So we're going, like if we would see the numbers, it would be group index uh, equal two. Uh, I'm not sure actually, like if with the indexes of the layers, it go from one, two, three, I don't know how it is in the shape passes, if it goes from zero to one, two, three, or it's one, two, three, but uh, well, let's just assume it's one, two, three. So uh, right now we have group index equal two. Uh, but what we need to figure out what is actually the index of the group above the group I am right now, I mean right now. So we're going to create another variable called group above index, and we're going to subtract our current value um, from our current value, um, just one. And that will give us an address of group main. So right now here we have group above index equal one. And uh, the next variable is the group name. We need to figure out what's actually the name of the group with this index. And for that we're using the name method. So group name is equal group main. And the next line is the offset amount. So we're just going to sort of pick whip uh, our variable to this slider. It could be like 20, 30, whatever, like whatever we'll put here, this is going to be the amount we are offsetting our shapes. And the last line is basically we're going to figure out uh, why, why did we need the address and the name of this group? Uh, because we want to go to this group and then we go to offset pass, which we can see here, content, group name, content, offset pass, uh, amount. So we're going to take this amount and we're going to put it together with the slider that we just created. So as you can see, this amount is zero, the slider is 20 and our result is 20. If our first group, I mean, uh, not first group, the group above would be like 10, then this group would be 30. If it would be 20, this group would be 40. Um, so that's pretty much it with the expression. We just need to copy this group uh, as many times as we like. And, um, Mm, sorry, there's one thing I forgot to mention. We want to do the round join here. You can actually do the milter join if you like this kind of look more, but I just prefer the round join. So right now, uh, if we're going to change this offset, we will see that uh, each shape is offsetting from the previous one for 25 pixels. Um, why do we need this? <laughs> we are going to animate this value. Uh, now it's just uh, super duper simple. We're going to increase it from 20 to 55 and then return back to 20. And to make this look a little bit more interesting rather than just this, uh, we're going to apply the preset. I'm using motion script, uh, sorry, motion extension, but you can just do it simply with, uh, you know, with the sliders here. So that's pretty much ready. We just need to create our little uh, star and our circle on top of this. So we're returning our circles animation back and let's create a shape layer with the circle on top of it. Add the fill and uh, make it black color. And I'm just going to place it here in the center. Um, I think the 30 300 pixels is a little bit too much, maybe something like 150. Right, and to create this star, I'm actually going to do a new composition now, Let's just make it a little bit simpler and let's keep it all organized. Uh, now we just need to create a line. I think 300 pixels will be enough. 
and apply the repeater on top of this. Four copies and we don't want to offset it with the position we want to offset it with the 45 degrees and maybe make uh, a stroke width a little bit bigger and all we need to do now is to place it here and just add some rotation on top of this so I'm going to animate rotation from zero degrees Okay, it's almost done. I think I'm just going to increase the stroke width a little bit and also we can kind of still see the offset of this shape here. So I think it will look a little bit better if we increase our circle animation and boom, <laughs> it's all ready. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions uh, in the comments down below. And next time we are going to do the letter Y and then the W. So see you next time, guys.